Mă mai nu știu apte, mă gândesc că te batem și te gândești. În cât te faci, mă gândești, te gândești. Ești tăci, mă gândești, 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 mă eu cred că e un chenuit. Și So this song was made for the baby and it connects with the heart when the baby is still in the womb and the baby hears the, the heartbeat. A Cree means to me to be able to speak the language, to respect the elders, to know the stories of your people, the legends, the hardships that they went through, the struggles that they had to go through, to uh, support their families in the bush without no technology and uh, using the knowledge that was passed down from generation to generation. And to be able to hunt freely the way that our our elders and ancestors uh, have done before. To me, that's what Cree is being about. I recall uh, living in log houses. And uh, later on, I learned they were built by the Indian Affairs agent. But before that, we lived in a tent. Tent frames. That was our community back then. Today, you have housing. You have uh, facilities. Cree school board, Cree hub board. We have grown.
I was very fortunate to be chief during the period that the political will was there for Premier Jacques Pierreseau to sit down with the Cree and say, okay, this is how I will implement our agreement. A lot of the economic development opportunities for the, the community and the people came as a result of that agreement. From there, there was been major changes. Our community just grew, the population just grew, and we started getting all these, uh, you know, uh, more houses, our larger schools. When you have good people in power and you have uh, good management, a, a community can, can flourish uh, uh, very easily. Well, the community is uh, very self-sufficient. We have uh, people that can run just about anything in the community, whether it's the uh, water services, uh, office services, uh, the school, health services, the management of those we can do. If it's not a permanent doctor that's here, it's a replacement that's here. They rotate enough so that we have somebody available all the time. We're not open 24-7, but we're available 24-7. At 13. Let's do one unit per night for now. Stir fry, Mr. Everything that a person needs, you don't have to go outside. You could easily uh, get everything here. I mean, we have technology, we have uh, satellites, we have Wi-Fi, we have everything. Right now, in Stisney, you can find uh, Canada Goose, North Face, Heli Hansen, all these uh, big uh, giant names. And it's, uh, it's nice to have them with their, its quality uh, clothing. Well, I'm proud where we are right now, but I think there's always room for improvement. I think we need to get more businesses and provide more services for the people that come to Mr. Disney. We do want to protect our community so as not to allow just anybody to come in. We want to give the opportunities to our people, but our people can choose a partner that they want to work with. Uh, so long as the service and product is acceptable for the community. Mr. Disney, I'll say it's, it's a beautiful community. When I was a young child, um, you could never talk about anything that happened to you. But we've learned to work together as a community. And with that, I'll say um, a lot has changed. Halfway through my career, I saw that uh, a lot of people started opening up, talking about what was happening to them. It's all about respect and uh, prevention, awareness. À ce promo, il est il était pour avoir de travailler, tu sais, parce qu'il parlait pas français ni en anglais. Moi, je suis arrivé, puis j'ai été à, à Québec, puis à Montréal, pour faire un tapret pour uh, Miss Tatini, puis un autre place. Puis on a commencé le travail matin, travail. La mine est Campbell. C'est là qu'on a fait de l'argent pas mal. In 1995, the first uh, mine uh, opened 
in, uh, in the Mistisni territory. Mistisni decided at that point, rather than have an approach of seeking uh, pure compensation, wanted involvement, especially employment and opportunities for its members and its people. That's how the relationship was built and that's how the agreement uh, was developed between the two. For the Mestisni people, the Chorlis project brought some hope and uh, I think uh, raised the spirit of the committee. It was the first uh, project where a mining company actually sat down with the committee to make an agreement on uh, what type of benefits and opportunities the community will be given. We had about uh, close to 100 of our people working there on a full-time basis in a different kind of environment, uh, shift work, which, were, which our people were not accustomed to, to doing, but they learned very quickly. So a lot of these people were able to uh, secure stable, uh, permanent jobs. I was in Mastasna before and I couldn't really find a job there. So I saw this uh, posting, mining. So I came down, did everything, passed my test, and I got in. Big machines like this, it's, they're incredible. For sure it meant a lot for Ms. Disney and uh, if you look at a lot of the businesses that have gone up in Ms. Disney in the last few years there's always been a Trollis connection. When the mining companies come in, um, people worked, got jobs and they were able to you know, raise their families, build their own homes, have the things they want. That's one issue I see. And the other way, well, the trapper was affected. My father-in-law's hunting ground, first two years we used to go there, there were lots of trees and all that. Within two years time, all the trees are gone. The animals aren't there, the trees are all gone because of forestry, you know. Development, you know, uh, will always have some kind of impact Today, regulations regarding uh, environment protection, animal habitat protection is very strict and it's very uh, controlled. So with those kind of regulations in place, it helps uh, the communities, the people that live off the land to, uh, to take care of the resources on the trap lines. I know of two mines that's been cleaned up now and where it's grown, like grass has grown and everything. It turned out to be a, a goose hunting spot. So it just helped a bit, you know. Nobody wants development that'll, uh, that'll be detrimental to the people, to the land, to the animals, to, to the people's health. Nobody wants that. But we always have to balance, you know, uh, what the community needs also. People need jobs. And some of these opportunities come at mine sites. We need the, the mines. We need the employment. And if the country is good for mining, why not open the door for it? Tabamioshun, <laughs>
arbeitet nicht. Mhm. Ich konnte nicht. Do these things are uh, very unique stuff and As a municipal government, we were starting to lose those uh, values. And it was then that the elders, the Regional Elders Council, brought it to our attention at a meeting in Wabmexto. Wait a minute. You guys, you're leaving us far behind. And when you're leaving us behind, you don't work with your values and your guiding principles as Cree. I want to keep our culture, our tradition, and our values so that our children and our grandchildren will always have them. There's lots of influence on the young people uh, today, but uh, the elders uh, want to keep our, our, our way of life, our culture, our tradition. So they ask the, the council to initiate some projects that will help uh, preserve our way of life and our culture, uh, preserving our own language also at the same time. <laughs> This is a, a traditional Cree uh, smoke smokehouse. What do you do with the fish first? Is uh, the higher higher part there? You dry and smoke for three hours, three hours and a half. When you're ready to, to cook, then you put it in a lower lower rack with the fire, and you have to keep a uh, tarp around it so you can keep the smoke in there. And uh, whatever you cook with the open fire, you always have that smoke. And that smoke gives you a natural flavor, natural flavor to your meat, natural flavor to your fish. And if you boil tea, that smoke gives you a natural flavor. That's the good thing about cooking with the open fire. We're always going to have our own ways of doing things, our own traditions, you know, our own customs. And that's, I think that's what's, just, that's what's going to sustain us. So that's what I want to instill in my, in my, my children, in my grandchildren, you know, to, to love, to respect the land. It's hard to hang them. You never leave these things on the ground. You can never change who you are. You are a Cree person. So it's built within you. It cannot move you. Even the things that, all the stuff that come in, in the stores and uh, technology, it might help you, but the things that, that help you mo more is the deep person inside you when you go out in the land. This is the hunter's pride when you get the bear, bear skull. These are like my trophies. You're going out there to look for something that you can give to the, to the community. It's food on the table from the family, and not just for the family, but our neighbors, our elders, 
there's a lot of elders in the community that can no longer go out in the bush. Whatever we can get out of the land, we have to share that for them. They're the ones that we go to for advice. Walking out ceremony is for, for the little girl. It's for to teach her in the future how to do things as a woman. And this is to celebrate her womanhood in the future, what she will be doing and how she will keep the tradition. The elders are so happy to to receive her because she is the next one that will carry on our tradition. Shashan <laughs> Yes, we're a municipal government now, but we still stand by our values. We still stand by our guiding principles that guided our people way back since time immemorial. Yeah. To maintain the Cree language, it's a good challenge. The new modern world, you have to have education. So you have kids going to school and you have parents hunting and trapping. So it's kind of a, still difficult. But we have people that are basically uh, teachers, Cree teachers that are still pushing every, uh, every child to learn Cree. And I encourage all young parents, myself, to speak Cree in our households. We have to find new words for uh, a lot of the technology that we work with today. So that's, that's a challenge. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be strong in moving forward. What I'm saying is that the people who are here are going to be here. The people who are here are going to be here. The people who are here are going to be here. Fortunately, radio especially has been a great tool to adapt because our language was always so very strong, well, an oral language, we never had a written language. So radio is a very natural process for us. So that's what helps us keep our language alive. If you say we're going to respect the land, then you have to go back to the land and live from the land or live off of the land. Our culture people, we're still fortunate there are people that go hunting still. So there's still a lot of people that know all the skills, our culture. So we still have a lot of people like that around. Here 
here during the goose break. It starts uh, late April to, uh, to the second week of uh, May. Everybody leaves the community and it's just like a, a three week that everybody goes on the, to the bush. important for the families to be all together in one tier. That's what we always do. Everybody does. I was born in the bush, I was raised in the bush, and that's who I am as a person. There's many influences in this world. Let's say it's cigarette smoking for one of them, all right? Um, what I noticed is that culture is a way of healing and in times of need, whenever you need to be in the bush. Oh, my boy. Yeah. We follow my dad. He taught me for uh, all, all the things with the trapping and all, to hunt for goose, moose, bear, even track. We always took all our children out to the land and it's, it brings the family so close together and it helps to prepare our children for the future, for their families. The land is a form of healing. One day I want to be able to show others, anyone, you know, Cree people, white people, I want to be able to show them that it has significant meaning to others. It's a it's a form of healing. This is my therapy here, and I love it in the bush. The young generation uh, have a lot of influence, but uh, it's interesting to see that they want to keep their language. There's a lot of young people that are interested in hunting, fishing, and trapping, and on the land, and, and the way of life. They're, they're very interested in that. Uh, he walks from here. There was two bears. Or somebody was keeping them. They were uh, medium size. So we went there and uh, there was a garage. They were inside. He opens the door like that. And she says, go in. Go get them. So why? Go inside, she said. So I went in. The bear came to me. He grabbed me and threw me on the floor. My dad says, don't move. So I didn't move, I just lying down on the floor. The bear turned around, he went to the corner again to sit. Every time if the bear wants to attack you, that's how you have to do. You don't move. You just stay. No bear didn't reach the trap yet. Maybe in a couple of days. We never take advantage of what the land provides for us because it's the land that sustains us, that keeps us who we are as a people. We live 
and we depend on that land. So whatever the land provides us, then we offer give our thanks back to the land. <laughs> In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It shows that we, we give thanks to the Creator. But it's the words that come from the heart, you know, to to offer thanks. <laughs> Mr. Disney, we have a department here, it's uh, uh, the tourism department. Uh, they'll g give you all the information, what you need to do, what you need to bring, if you come to Mr. Disney. We treat our guests uh, with honor with respect. Just like the way we expect them to treat us, that's how we treat them. We will welcome you. We will show you what we can about our tradition, our culture, our values, anything. If you want to learn our language, we will help you if we can. We have unlimited knowledge, uh, unlimited space where you can learn and see the culture. We're still developing our plan to attract more tourists, to attract a bigger number of uh, outside people to come and visit, to learn about the culture, to come fishing. We have lots of uh, recreation activities. Uh, if you want that, we can provide that for you. Sedru no. Catchy I enjoy the life up here. I have everything I want to do. I can go fishing if I want. I can go prospecting if I want. And I'm proud to, you know, live in the community of Mr. Sini. My family's all here. I'm happy. What a nice community. We live near a beautiful lake. Uh, we have the uh, nature in our backyard. And uh, we are a community that, that's a vibrant, uh, always something happening, always interesting. It's a community for anybody to learn, learn new things, learn about the people, learn about life. Uh, and it's a great place to come and visit.
Les Indiens ici, c'est du bon monde ici. Moi, je trouve que c'est du bon monde. We are very strong Cree. We have not lost our language, our culture. We still have it all. I had a dream, and I saw in my dream our young people successful. I saw them driving their own pickup trucks and people down south were respecting them for who they were. They were still wearing their buckskin jackets and uh, I was proud of them. There's a significant meaning to being Cree. We're basically one.